So in a recent video that I did, I actually showed this cardboard Yagi that I actually threw together in literally 10 minutes while my neighbour was out cutting his front lawn. And uh, since then, a few people have been in touch asking me if they can have the uh, measurements for this or uh, I can actually do a video showing how I uh, actually uh, made this little Yagi antenna. So what I thought I'd do is actually show you how to make one of these uh, little compact Yagi antennas but uh, instead of using cardboard using something more substantial. So the measurements for this are actually quite straightforward. We've got five parasitic elements and each one of those parasitic elements is 55 millimeters long and we've got one element that is the uh, reflector at the back here and that's actually 70 millimeters long and these are all spaced out quite uniformly we've got a 60 millimeter space between the uh, back reflector and the first parasitic element and then all the other parasitic elements are actually spaced out at 30 millimeters each now in between the reflecting element here and the first parasitic element directly in the middle we've got the uh, actual driven element so it's 30 millimeters from the back reflector and 30 millimeters from the first parasitic element so to actually make the boom for this antenna i've got some aluminium box tube in here and it's uh, 15 millimeters thick and uh, 100 millimeters long and for the parasitic elements and the uh, reflecting elements, I'm going to be using this uh, quite thick wire that I actually got from some uh, wire coat hangers. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you a link to these particular coat hangers because I actually got these some time ago now. And the seller sent me these instead of the more traditional thinner ones that I actually wanted at the time. So I've had these lying around for quite a while, but it's just four millimeter thick uh, metal wire. Now you could use some metal tubing as well and this is a uh, net curtain pole and it's uh, exactly six millimeters in diameter so you could actually use this instead of the uh, wire. So what I've done here then I've uh, actually measured from the edge of the box tubing here 10 millimeters and I put my first mark for my first parasitic element and then the rest of them I've taken from that uh, measurement there 30 millimeter spacing in between and uh, this is the final parasitic element and the space here to the back reflector is 60 millimeters now one of the reasons I've never shown how to make a Yagi antenna like this one before on my channel is because it is extremely difficult to actually get the holes drilled straight through without a uh, drill press but if you do it this way measure out one side first drill your holes on this side then flip it over measure them out again and then drill from the opposite side you'll get much better results than actually trying to drill all the way through the box tube in here in one go they, they will end up uh, being slightly bent or uh, you know out of measurement so uh, actually do it this way a little bit more time and uh, you'll get a much better result although if you have got a uh, drill press or access to a drill press it will make it a lot easier now what I've actually done to help guide my uh, drill uh, into position where I actually want it on that mark is I've made a little uh, punch hole in each one of those marks there. Now if you haven't got a hole punch then uh, just get yourself a nail and a hammer and just lightly tap it just uh, enough there to put a little indentation in there just to guide your actual drill. So after I uh, got the hole punch out, I uh, went along with a smaller drill bit and drilled out the holes. And uh, that was just to help me guide the uh, larger drill bit that I'm now using. So uh, I can actually uh, widen it to a diameter to fit the elements through themselves. And I've also gone quite up close to uh, the edge here, just uh, because the edge of this uh, box tube here actually helps guide me to keep it nice and straight as well. So don't try and aim for the middle of uh, your boom, try and get it right uh, on the uh, edge here, just uh, it helps to guide you, get that drill bit nice and straight so that your elements sit nice and straight as well. So now that I've uh, actually measured out and hole punched the other side, I'm going to drill all the way through and hopefully if I've got my measurements correct, they'll all match up and be nice and straight. So to hold the elements in place, I use epoxy. So what I do, I put a coating on the element itself and then feed it through the hole and give it a twist, get that epoxy to work in there. And then uh, when the epoxy is dry, you can actually just scrape off any excess epoxy like I've got on these elements here. So I've got quite a coating of epoxy on the element and just slowly 
feed it in there and keep twisting it around to work that epoxy in and just as the epoxy is actually starting to cure you want to get your ruler just make sure that the uh, element is directly in the center of this boom so now that I've got all the elements epoxied in place I'm now going to move on to the uh, driven element and how I actually go about making that so to make the driven element for this uh, Yagi what I've got here is some uh, two millimeter thick galvanized fencing wire now I've cut off a length at uh, 126 millimeters which is uh, one full wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz and I've also marked off two quarter wavelengths at either end of the uh, length of wire so now we're going to have to bend this into a curve shape a little bit like making a uh, clover leaf antenna so what I've got to help me is a aerosol can here and I'm going to use this ridge that's in the uh, base of the can to actually help guide the wire around and bend it into a uh, curve shape so I'm going to start with it in the middle and then slowly bend it round so I get a nice curve just doing it slowly so I don't get any kinks in there and it's nice and straight curve so now that I've got my curve in there what I'm going to do now is get some pliers and uh, just at the start of that quarter wavelength about there I'm now going to actually bend that in so it starts to come in to meet the other end and the same with the other side so we get an element that looks like that so I'm going to put the driven element together and uh, I've got the driven element here that I've just made and I've pre-tinned the ends there ready to solder on this uh, coax now this coax I've actually crimped on a uh, SMA connector and I've also got it quite short because I want to actually mount my card and uh, have it actually sitting on the boom of the Yagi itself but uh, I've also got this bottle top here plastic bottle top and I've drilled a hole there so the coax can actually come in through that end and the two holes at either side are actually for the driven element itself and this is another reason why you want to pre-tin the driven element because heat will travel up there when you're actually trying to solder it and uh, end up melting the uh, the bottle top itself so pre-tin it prior to actually uh, mounting it inside this and I've also got a uh, bit of sandpaper and roughed up the base of this bottle top and also leveled it out because we're going to be epoxying that directly to the beam of the uh, Yagi itself so to assemble all this then I've got the driven element and I just feed that through one of the holes first then I can bring it round and feed it through the second one and then I've got my coax here and what I can do is feed that through that front hole there and I can solder all that in place and now that it's all soldered up I'm going to actually epoxy it onto the boom itself remember the driven element wants to be directly in the middle of the reflector and this first parasitic element here so it's 30 millimeters from the back reflector and 30 millimeters from that first parasitic so here is the finished Yagi and as you can see I've given it a coat of paint just to tidy it up a little bit and really I should have taken my time a little bit more and drilled that hole more precisely for the coax because it's a little bit to one side but uh, it still looks okay and there's a shot down the boom so you can see how the parasitic elements line up with the uh, main driven element on this antenna and the bottle top that I actually used to house the driven element I could have just added a little bit more epoxy there just to make it level and smooth so just to tidy that up I'm going to put a round piece of uh, sticky backed vinyl on there just to tidy it up a little bit so what I'm going to do is give this a test now and I was going to test it against this cheap Yagi that you can pick off off eBay they actually sell these by the thousand they really do but um, I think uh, I don't think it was a previous video but one previous to that I showed how poor these are so I'm not even going to bother hooking this one up to compare it so I'm going to actually compare it to the uh, turbo tenor that uh, this actual design is based off so the measurements on this are exactly the same as the turbo tenor so we'll see how well it performs against this one that is uh, apparently tuned by turbo tenor and uh, you know this one goes for about 80 to 90 pounds on ebay
So first of all then, a quick test with the turbo tenor and the alpha card. I'm just going to leave it in that fixed position. I'm not actually going to move it around, but uh, we'll do a scan now of the access points. So it's not doing too bad. I think uh, previously it got uh, over 30 access points, so... It's at 29, it's just hit 30. Some of them are dead though, but it's not doing too bad at all. 33 access points. So what I'll do, I'll just uh, stop this now, then I'll swap it out and we'll do a scan with the uh, Yagi antenna that I've just made. So a quick scan with the Yagi that I've just made and I'm expecting to be uh, a similar kind of access points to the turbo tenor in the high 20s there. Of course I've made this by hand so there's a couple of errors. If I had uh, a drill press it would be uh, a lot better but uh, even so it's not doing too bad already. We've got 24 access points, 25. So it's starting to creep up. 29 access points. So not bad at all when you compare that. To, it's probably cost me a uh, couple of pounds for the SMA connectors and the coax. And uh, you know the, the boom and the actual elements were just made out of things that I had lying around in the workshop there. When you compare that to something that costs between 70 or 60 to 90 pounds it's not too bad at all and we have actually picked up 32 access points although a few of them are dead but so so were some of them on the uh, turbo tenor as well so i'm pretty pleased with that so i hope you enjoyed that little video it actually came about because i've had a few people asking me for the measurements for this so i thought it'd be easier just to do a video showing you how you can actually make one and as you saw in the test there i think the turbo tenor picked up uh, three or four more access points than uh, this one I've made but uh, you know the price difference in the two then uh, you know it's it's nothing really it's just minor so again I hope you uh, enjoyed this and you have a go at actually making one of these yourself it is a, a nice little compact design for a Yagi although I'm not a big Yagi antenna fan they, they don't actually work well over long distances they work well in a small confined space uh, but uh, you know with a lot of access points because they're quite a wide band but um, you know as a uh, distance antenna I'm not a big fan of them at all so if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up drop any comments or questions below and I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one